All right, now this is the last section of transport phenomena in uh, biological systems. Uh, here I want to discuss uh, a few examples of a transport processes in disease pathology and treatment issue. I believe uh, this transport is such an important in our physiology that if there's something wrong or the pathology is very related to this transport phenomena. And even our treatment strategy is also very important. And this transport phenomena is based on engineering uh, approach. So we need to understand this uh, to come up with a better treatment or understanding of this disease process. So first, um, an example as a atherosclerosis, uh, which is a disease of middle or large sized uh, elastic and muscular arteries. And when fully developed, the lesions will protrude into the lumen of the artery. Of course, that will reduce uh, the blood flow because of the increase of resistance as we understand the the relationship of uh, this uh, pi flow, the resistance to the fourth is, uh, resistance is related to the one over uh, the radius to the fourth. And, and uh, that's, uh, I think here is described as uh, there's a flow and there's a lesion, uh, um, so-called a plug, atherosclerotic plug, and that will narrow down this uh, uh, blood vessel, especially artery. And what, when it becomes a problem is when this uh, so-called vulnerable plaque will rupture and, and that will expose and generate a blood clot. So plaques forming and plaques grow and, and eventually if it, it, it ruptures, then blood clot forms and it, it will limit the flow. In bad case, it will block the uh, the vessel and what happens if it happens to be on top uh, uh, the feeding vessel to the heart the heart the downstream tissue will die and that's called myocardial infarction so uh, this uh, reducing blood flow to tissue downstream or causing platelets to adhere this arterial wall and that results in the inside to blood clot or called a throm throm thrombosis, or when it becomes a traveling clot, it's called embolism that can lodge into the lung, causing emphysema, and or it can lodge into the brain, it can cause a ischemic stroke. So that's a big problem. And here I put a real um, a sample with a stain, so you can see this narrowed artery, so uh, causes atherosclerosis. And also this uh, pathological picture is from aorta. So aorta developing artery atherosclerosis. You can see the lesions here. The surface is not smooth at all. And sometimes this carotid artery, when it develops this atherosclerotic uh, plague, and that causes a uh, turbulent flow. So when this uh, flow happens, this turbulent flow causes a sound, a specific sound called a brute, so we can use it as a, a diagnostic clue. And of course, these are, can lead to heart attack, or heart failure, or in, when it comes brain, a stroke can happen. So I want to discuss uh, about cancer um, related to cancer, so which will be topic for the next uh, uh, time. So in general, when there is a cancer, uh, we have about three kinds of treatment. First is a radiation therapy. The second is a, a first a surgical resection, surgically remove the tumor out. And the second is a radiation to, uh, to a target specific for highly proliferative uh, cancer cells. And lastly, a chemotherapy. Uh, so here, surgery and radiation is uh, when the patient have a few large tumors in the body, then we can identify, we can surgically resect, or before or after we can use ionizing radiation to try to kill uh, and reduce the tumor mass. Or after surgery, we try to kill the remnant tumor by using radiation. 
but those may not be uh, complete and typically it follows with a chemotherapy drug and that chemical drug which usually targets for uh, uh, rapidly proliferating cancer cells and this is a systemic therapy. And the problem so far is we can cure uh, or kill cancer cells in vitro experiment. Uh, the problem is in the real patient, it, it doesn't happen that way always. And that one part of the issue is because of the drug delivery. So how to deliver anti-cancer agents to tumor is a very important engineering aspect of the problem. And I bring uh, three movies, which I, uh, from my research, I took these uh, three uh, pictures and let's discuss what it is. So the left part of this is a, uh, there's a tumor one side and the other part, so called the other part, so called more normal side. And this black dots inside the vessel is uh, in fact red blood cell. So you can see uh, this red blood cells move very uh, smoothly and you can see it's, it's, it's well perfused. While this part is lower part, the green is uh, actually tumor cell. So this is a tumor boundary. So, so let's see how the flow looks like. So you see this flows uh, kind of okay, but in here it's much slower and uh, intermittent flow while the other part looks quite okay. And uh, what happens when we were totally inside the tumor? The blood vessel diameter is uh, comparable to the normal side one. However, when you look at the flow, let me uh, show you here. It's much slower, so the perfusion doesn't uh, do very well. And you see these dots stop, stops. What that means is, and some part of this uh, tumor, the vessel perfusion kind of stops, which means our drug will not pass through. So um, the problem is in the cancers, even single cancer cells can remain and proliferate again to recur the, the tumor and, and which can be a big problem. It can, uh, so you see, even if we give our drug orally or even intravenously, you know, if this drug delivery is through our circulation and the circulation doesn't work inside the cancer, we've got an issue. So the delivery is a, uh, a very important issue and efficiency of our delivery is depends on physical and chemical property of therapeutic agents and the tumor microenvironment. So, uh, so understanding this is very important to uh, when we try to actually uh, treat a patient tumor. And, and as an example of therapeutic agents, um, so what's necessary in our treatment? So for example, radiation therapy requires an oxygen in, uh, for generating reactive oxygen species to kill uh, the tumor cell. The problem you see the previously Inside the tumor, some part of the tumor may not be well perfused. That means oxygen delivery is not good enough in that area, such that even radiation therapy may not be effective in that part of a poorly perfused part. So it becomes a problem. And chemotherapy, we use cytotoxic drugs, which target uh, proliferating a tumor. But if the drug cannot get into the tumor properly, that's a problem. And we have some of another therapeutic agents as a so-called photodynamic therapy, uh, which utilize photosensitizers, uh, which hopefully get well into the tumor. And we use a light to activate this photosensitizer to be toxic locally to the tumor. Or in gene therapy, uh, viral or non-viral vectors has to be delivered to those problematic cells which needs a genetic modification. So this delivery is again an issue and immunotherapy, a vaccine or effector cell delivery to the uh, right uh, uh, location would be an issue. So transport processes has to be considered when we consider the delivery of these 
kinds of therapeutic agents. Uh, so we need to understand, uh, let's say, the tumor micro invite uh, fast circulation, so circulation into the tumor. And when there's a vessel, and the vessel may not be the same as healthy, normal physiological uh, vessel. So the transport uh, across the vessel in of the drug agents is important. So we can call transvascular transport has to be considered. What about the uh, therapeutic agents pass out of the vessel? Then it will be in the interstitial. Interstitial uh, space, it, can, it has to move on towards the cancer cells. So interstitial fluid flow or interstitial transport becomes very important. And now it gets into the tumor cells and the transport across the, the tumor cell plasma membrane will be also, again, important. And once it gets inside the cell, intracellular transport. So you look at these multiple layers of transport uh, uh, layers or hurdles for effective transport of an, uh, therapeutic agents to really take effect to the, uh, the cancer cells. So that's a, such an important issue we can think of uh, for a practical uh, therapy.